Our next guest is a young artist who at just 23 has done what many artists spend decades trying to achieve. That is making a living from her art. And Sophia Minson's spurned or turned her back rather on the chance to go to art school. She dropped out of art at high school so she's taken none of the traditional routes it seems. She's already had solo exhibitions and is selling her work both here and overseas for up to $14,000 a piece. Sophia Minson is with us now in our Auckland studio. Nice to have you with us. Hi Catherine. I'm enjoying uh, looking at uh, copies of your work it has to be said and we'll get some uh, up on our uh, web page for people to be able to look at as well. How would you describe your art? Um, well, I pretty much do portraits, landscapes, um, surrealist objects, um, that sort of thing. Um, quite a smooth style. I use oils on canvas. So, um, yeah, I enjoy blending the paints very smoothly and having the layers build up the, um, the, the lights and the darks. So oil on canvas is the, uh, the medium. In terms of, uh, of colour, are you a strong user of strong colours? I mainly like to use the stark uh, greys or browns and then have um, like a dramatic contrast with bright oranges and, and blues and really, you know, make that vibrant. In terms of the subjects, a diverse range, I'm looking here at some work uh, I can hear Africa calling from 2005 and some fascinating portraits there. What drives the subject of your work? Yeah, well, I... Um, I lived overseas when I was younger with my family because my dad was a um, civil engineer and he was being a project manager for various um, companies overseas. And uh, so we lived in Sri Lanka when I was in my teens. And I got back to New Zealand when I was 14 thinking, well, who am I? What am I doing? Sort of, it, I felt a bit rootless in a way. And um, I got straight into the exploring different cultures and really having... Um, really emphasising the, the beauty of the diversity of people from all over the world. And then, um, so after this Sri Lankan and African theme that I delved into at the beginning, I then started exploring my Māori ancestry after that. So, yeah. Did you have artists who inspired you or on, on whom you modelled your work? It wasn't re No, not really artists, just uh, life and experience had inspired me at that point. Some almost have a photographic quality, if I can put it that way. Um, uh, and I can see almost the artist of the photographer here in, in terms of capturing some of the yeah. portraits and some of the people. Yeah, I, I don't know where that came from. It just appeared suddenly. Um, <laughs> about four years ago, I started painting um, people, and and that's the way it came out. It, it must be meant to be. <laughs> you are self-taught. Have you had any training? No, well, yeah, as you were saying in your intro, I... In fifth form art, I basically decided, oh, artists are poor. You know, you can't make a living as an artist. So I figured, you know, I'd leave that as my hobby at home. And then at school, I con concentrated on the sciences, um, like physics, biology. And, um, yeah, and then after school, I went straight into uh, a science degree and did a year of that. And then I felt a pull back towards the arts. And so that's uh, when I decided to apply for different art schools got into Elam, um, but at that point I decided that, oh, artists are still poor. Apparently I had that idea in my head and uh, went and did a spatial design degree at AUT, which was all about interior architecture and anything really 3D. So uh, it was during those three years where I was doing that degree in Auckland that, um, that I began painting, you know, did these por big portraits of um, Sri Lankan and African people. And um, and I realised that's what I love doing and there's no denying it and people started to buy my work and so I've just, you know, gone from there, really um, made the most of it. So is it almost accidental that you bypass the formal training rather yes. than a conscious decision of saying, I don't like what this place might do to me? Yeah, it was never really a conscious decision but um, looking back I think it was the right path for me because... Um, I feel there's still a lot of mystery and just there's none of the game in what I do in my art, whereas I think some people anyway uh, going to art school perhaps, you know, become a bit disillusioned with it because of the um, intellect, over intellectualization of painting and of, you know, art in general. So, yeah, I, I still have a lot of the fun about it. 
So when you mentioned the design uh, work that you were doing, do you think that that, or the study that you were doing, do you think that that in some ways has been infused into your art as well? Yeah, perhaps. I think being, you know, concentrating on 3D and the spatial design, um, it's taught me a lot about composition and really representing space. So a lot of my um, landscapes really draw your eye in and create this um, a whole other world, mystical world that you can become entrenched in. And um, yeah, and also the, the spatial design degree would have um, taught me a bit about business skills and, you know, creating a plan. <laughs> Which is something we'll come to, I think, in terms of, of your ability to make a, make a living out of it. Self-taught, though, it always sounds such an easy sort of description uh, to something. What was your development as an artist? Was it always, even as a child, a, a, an obvious talent? How did you develop it? Yeah, I, I have always loved art ever since I was, ever since I can remember, really. Um, I, I was always encouraged by my family as well to just draw and paint and colour in. I remember that was one of my favourite things, actually, was just colouring in books. And um, so it's it's been a self-exploration, just at home and carried on with that. So you're this accidental artist and you say people started buying, which means that you were presumably quite early on exhibiting. How were you going about that? Well, actually, um, someone recommended getting a website and that was in 2004 and um, that was the second year of my degree. So I set up this website and I actually sold from that, like directly to the public. And that was brilliant. And then I participated in several group shows from then on. Um, the women's show was like my first public showing of my works. And uh, that was in August 2004. And yeah, that was sold out. And I was totally, you know, pleasantly surprised about that. So I just yeah, kept seeking opportunities to um, participate in these group shows around Auckland.